Growing up, my parents were very overprotective. You ever do this with your kids? Uh, whenever one of our pets would die, they'd secretly replace it so we wouldn't get upset. <laughs> Yeah, like I'm not going to notice, you know, before school I say goodbye to Brownie the hamster. I come home, he's Casper the white lab rat. <laughs> I never missed a day of school. I saw what happened to you when you stayed home with mom. <laughs> yes, I was a Hillary Clinton impersonator for both times that she ran. Now, regardless of what side of the political fence you're on, You'd impersonate a celebrity or political figure, too, if you could, because there's big money in it. Most people can't afford to have the real celebrity at their event, so they'll pay for a fake lookalike. A comedian, Steve Bridges, passed away a few years ago, but he used to be the George Bush and Bill Clinton impersonator, and he literally made a fortune. It's a skill, and it takes a lot of time to perfect the character. Now, I never thought about doing it, but I got a call from an agent who brought it up. He said there are no comedian Hillary Clinton impersonators. I looked around and he was right. I saw one woman doing it, but she was more of like a meet and greet Hillary, not a comedian. That was perfect. I talked to my comedian friend, Frank King, and he said he'd be my bill. And so my impersonator journey began. Now, in order to become Hillary, I didn't just have to buy a pantsuit. <laughs> that was part of it. But the big issue was making my face look like hers. The first time she ran for president and I impersonated her, since I don't normally look like her, I did it by putting on a prosthetic mask on my face. Frank knew of a special effects makeup artist, Brian, who lived in Los Angeles, and it turned out Brian's studio was about 15 minutes from my house. Now, the prosthetic mask is really an interesting procedure, unless you're the one having it done. Because <laughs> what Brian had to do was take a plaster cast of my face. Yeah, he had to put wet plaster all over my whole face and let it dry. Now, I'm claustrophobic. Plastering my eyes shut was hard. The plaster stayed on for like 30 minutes, and I made Brian stand there and talk to me the whole time. The cast turned into a mold, and from the mold, he'd pour in some kind of rubbery goop that cooled and solidified, and then he'd somehow form it into some shape that looked like Hillary's features instead of mine. He used pictures for guidance, but I don't really know how he did it. I think I was too traumatized from the plaster on my face. <laughs> Then he'd peel the rubber face off the mold and he'd glue it to my face. And he'd use makeup to color it in and make it look even more like Hillary. It's kind of that face that Tom Cruise would put on in the Mission Impossible movies to change his looks. Yeah, except that it does not slap on and peel off in minutes while you're chasing an assassin. It took about two hours to put on and almost that long to take off. You can't just rip it off your face because it's glued on. Your face will come off with it. And you can't reuse it either. I needed a new face for every event. Now, I never had to do the mold again, thankfully, but Brian would need a couple days heads up to get the mask ready if I had an event. After the glue was taken off, though, your face was really soft, like you'd had a facial. The bad thing, did I mention two hours on, two hours off? It was a long process. And since Frank and I aren't makeup artists, we'd have to travel with one. Now, Frank and I, along with a comedy friend of mine, Peter Charkalis, then wrote some political jokes. Nothing mean, just some funny takes on her stand on different issues. I don't do mean comedy, and I didn't want to bash anyone. And to get gigs, we needed a video, so we got my voiceover friend, Kevin Delaney, to interview us on camera. We pretended that we were on, like, a TV talk show, and he asked us questions. We also found a guy who was a Barack impersonator to help with some interviews. He already looked like Barack, so he didn't have to do a plaster cast. Also, since I play the drums, we made a video of me as Hillary drumming up support. <laughs> I drummed out the song My Sharona by The Knack because it has a pretty good drum beat. And finally, we got headshots and yes, I bought a pantsuit along with some makeup shoes and a wig. Frank got his Bill wig and makeup and suit and boom, we were Bill and Hill ready for our first booking. The takeaway from this is in every profession, there are a lot of things that you can do that you may not be aware of that you can make money on. In this case, one comment from an agent set me down a new path that I really hadn't thought about. And aside from making money at it, as you'll hear in future episodes, it gave me some interesting experiences. That's it for this episode. Thanks for listening. Feel free to check out my website, theworklady.com. This is Jan. Take care and enjoy your journey.